My story is pretty amazing. You can read about it in the Bible in the book of Numbers and Joshua. The first time I'm mentioned is Numbers chapter 13, verse 6. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh. Who you come from can be important, but who you are, well, that's another matter entirely. It's a secret formula to how I accomplished what I did. It is the same formula you can use to accomplish amazing things. But first, my story. God finds joy when his children obey him. However, God's heart is stirred with a unique delight when one of his children enthusiastically obeys with their whole heart. The Lord commands Moses to send 12 spies to Canaan, one leader from each tribe of Israel. I am the leader chosen from the tribe of Judah. I'm all in. The 12 of us depart the desert of Paran. We infiltrate Canaan from the south in the Negev and go north to the hill country. Per the instructions of Moses, we gather information regarding the people, towns, and countryside. For 40 days, we scout the countryside. It's magnificent. Traversing the region, we conclude it yields a bounty we could not have imagined. Moses must be fully briefed on this. However, it is going to be difficult for anyone to believe. It's, it's beyond belief what we've seen. So in the Valley of Eshkol, we cut off one branch of a grapevine, one, holding just one cluster of grapes. It takes two men to carry it along with pomegranates and figs. I can hardly contain my anticipation of Moses' response. This company of spies has experienced the reward that most surely awaits our conquest of this land. Upon our return, we give our full report to Moses and the entire assembly of the Israelites. First, the report went as our cohort had agreed. We informed them that the land was indeed flowing with milk and honey, a fabulous land. Unexpectedly, some of the spies in our company wavered. There are powerful people who inhabit the land, they said. We should invade the land, I stepped in immediately, because we will certainly conquer it. Ten of the spies in our company of twelve had become cowards. Joshua and I stood our ground. It was of no use. The ten spread rumors about the people who lived there that they were powerful and they would certainly defeat us. Overnight, these ten spies convinced the people to rebel against Moses and God. The entire assembly of the Israelite people refused to enter Canaan and conquer it. God is angry, so angry that he tells the people they will never enter the promised land. Only Joshua and I will get to enter it because we are faithful. You may know the rest of the story. We Israelites are commanded to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all of the rebellious ones die. Then Joshua leads us into the Promised Land, where we do conquer virtually all of the lands there. We fight the Canaanites. I go to Joshua to claim the land that God has promised me. I am 85 years old, but as vigorous as the day I was 40. And I tell him that. I tell him to give me the difficult country with the fortified cities of the Anakites and that I will surely drive them out with the Lord's help. Be assured that this will happen. Joshua tells me to go take it, and I do. Ever since then, my family has owned Hebron and the land around it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to, and his descendants will inherit it. This is how the Lord described me in front of Moses and the whole assembly of the Jews when I recommended we enter Canaan. That's the secret formula, wholeheartedly. I follow God wholeheartedly. That's who I am. I am the first person in the Bible described that way. What an honor. If you follow that concept through the Bible, you will find God has a special affection for those who follow him wholeheartedly. 
the Apostle Paul commanded the Ephesians to serve wholeheartedly, as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Truly one of the saddest verses in the Bible concerns one of the kings of Judah, Amaziah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not wholeheartedly. It's tragic in my opinion. Amaziah is like the people who say they want to follow God. They really kind of, sort of, maybe want to follow God. They want to follow him when his commands make sense to them, when, when it is convenient for them, when the sacrifice is not too much. I had 10 close colleagues who thought and did the same throughout the Bible. God is harsh to those kinds of followers. Even Jesus chastises them in the parable of the sower. Wholeheartedly versus not wholeheartedly. There is an enormous difference, especially when serving God. My servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly. My secret weapon in the secret formula? A different spirit than those around me. Those around me could have been my fellow Israelites, my fellow spies, my family even, whoever it was, irrelevant. The issue at hand, I had a different spirit, a different spirit than those who didn't trust God, who didn't obey Him fully and completely. It takes a different spirit, a different attitude to take risks when He has asked you to follow Him. His interests above yours, can it be difficult? Absolutely. Can it scare you? No question. What if I think you know my answer to anything you ask? A different spirit and wholeheartedly. Have a different spirit and follow God wholeheartedly.